I don't want to feel like I'm coming down too hard on the Christian film industry, but Christians really, really suck at antagonists. And I'm, I'm, I was struggling with like, why is that? And it's one of the reasons why Christian movies are so cheesy. First of all, you have to be a mature writer and um, there's just not enough money in the film industry, the Christian film industry to support a lot of writers to the point of maturity. It takes a long time to be making quality work as a writer. I don't even feel like I'm there yet and I've been writing for 10 years. So it's, that's part of the problem. But I think as we've been talking about, you have to have some insight into morality, into psychology and how people work and how humans work and all of that to even start approaching the idea of coming up with an original frightening villain you have to have insight um but a few thoughts and i haven't thought these through all the way so i'd appreciate hearing your guys's thoughts about this too but i think one of the main reasons that uh, christians especially second antagonists in christian media i think this goes for novels as well as films is christians tend to view things in very black and white and i think megan you've kind of already touched on that um if you divide into camps of good and evil right there's just not not a lot of room for nuance and complexity there but um i thought about this because i i don't think it's it's a bad thing necessarily it's just bad in art so we as christians we like our lines clearly defined this is sin that is not this is good that is not um this is a temptation that is not we need our lines clearly defined when it comes to morals and knowing how to act and behave and and when it comes to morals <laughs> you don't want to be fuzzy you don't want fudgy morals jesus didn't ever say you know i kind of think this is a good idea and or this might be okay in some sort of it's like didn't talk that way it was this or that here's the principles here's the truth um so when i'm talking when i'm critiquing christians on looking at the world through a black and white lens i'm not advocating for fudgy morals not interested in that i don't think the underlying truths of your narrative should be gray or confusing or you or you know that thing the artists do where it's like well you just get to make your own interpretation of it it's what you saw in the story it's like I don't believe that truth is truth wrong is wrong you I do need to know what the underpinning truth and moral story is that you're telling and it shouldn't be I guess nuance and complexity are not the same thing as confusion and fudging the lines okay but where black and white thinking gets in the way of creating antagonists is it's difficult to want to see things from somebody else's point of view right if you paint yourself in the good category, it's um, the only other option is complete evil. And why would you want to empathize with that or legitimize it by doing everything we've been talking about this whole time? Um, steel manning your antagonist argument and making them a whole multifaceted person who's dealing with the circumstances of their life the best with the tools that they were given by their life. And so it's it's difficult to want to do that when you see the world in black and white megan says i think the reason why christians suck at making villains is because of our own self-righteousness yup not always but i can see that being a stumbling block you have to have discernment right um a good example of this to me is the professor character from the god's not dead i really could not stand that movie um <laughs> it's very because I just think that character was a straw man in a lot of ways. And the way that you would have gotten over that is it extremely uncomfortable as a Christian to think about, right? It's uncomfortable for a Christian. It feels sacrilegious. I don't think it is, but I feel it feels um, sacrilegious to think about what are the best arguments for atheism. What are the actual best arguments for atheism? What are the hard questions that even the best Christian theologians and scholars have a hard time coming up with good answers for? Right, you'd have to travel down that path to make that villain actually compelling. And I also would have, 
instead of making him very overbearing and he's kind of a bully and I don't know his whole express he's just kind of angry and bleh, towards everyone not just our main character but I would have changed that to create a character whose intellectual knowledge and his persuasive rhetoric would have made him extremely charismatic right and I think that Christians have an, a, a hard time with that idea that you're presenting the other side as charismatic and I can hear hear it now oh but what if that would be a stumbling block to people what if people watching this movie thought atheism was a good idea right but he would have presented a very different antagonist and a much more powerful one to the protagonist who was this kind of awkward and inexperienced kid and the the conflict that was set up was over who could win over the rest of the class and so you make the professor this extremely charismatic intellectual character oh suddenly that's a giant that this awkward inexperienced kid has to tackle and not just this grumpy old guy who, bleh, you know but no we wouldn't want to show the atheist having any positive traits or any good arguments and and I don't just mean his we wouldn't want the story to make any good arguments for atheism and not just I'm not just talking about the intellectual arguments that are part of it but that that antagonist would have put way more pressure on the protagonist's weaknesses right and it would have caused the protagonist to have to grow more so the point of your antagonist isn't so that the audience will think, oh, maybe they had some good points or hmm, maybe we should consider all the sides and compromise more and um, fudge our morals. The point is that the truth that has to defeat a compelling untruth is stronger than the truth that goes up against a weak untruth. That's the point. Think we are afraid of philosophy will trump biblical truth to some people therefore we make bad guys have no motivation no good argument it's fear-based yeah yeah it's fear-based but i was reading about this and would you looky looky there um no testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone god is faithful and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength but what with the testing he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it and i think that that sums up pretty well everything that we've been talking about and what the hero is supposed to go through right that's what stories are supposed to take us through and that's what we as writers will go through as well as we struggle with our own ideas and conveying our own ideas. I thought that was really cool to find that in the Bible. I'm like, well, that, that's it right there. That's, that lays out the whole thing. Um, okay, so that's point one. Christians have a tendency to think too black and white. And I, you're right, I think fear-based on they, if, if you step a toe into the other side, then you're all the way in the other side, right? It's not just that you can think about these things and consider them but you but you still understand the morals involved it's like if you travel over there you're over there you're with the evil people now right so that's the first reason i think the second reason is that christian film and maybe this is true for books too i haven't read a ton of like christian um fiction books um but christian film fundamentally misunderstands what the conflict is um, the model that we have for the Christian film genre is one that is centered around the story of salvation. Or you could kind of think of it as it's the story of salvation or um, a battle against evil or Satan. And the reason that this does not work is because we as humans are not agents in that battle. In reality, we are not agents in that battle. We're not agents in the story of salvation either. We don't defeat evil. We can't defeat Satan. Jesus already did. That's That battle already played out and we simply have to see our needs so that we can accept the salvation that Jesus bought with his blood, right? That's the whole point of Christianity. That's our whole message. We are sinners who sinned, who need to be saved. 
<laughs> so trying to reconfigure that story in any way to make the human the hero of the story actually ruins our whole belief system. And this is the problem that like most of Christian media has been grappling with for a while now, <laughs> like since it started. <laughs> it's like, it's connected to the black and white idea. If the conflict is about us versus Satan or evil, then the antagonist has to be some manifestation of evil. And the writers can use that idea. Oh, it needs to be about salvation, right? Um, they can use that as an excuse to not have to do the hard work of strongmanning their villain or the even harder work of taking a good honest look at yourself and seeing the darkness and the potential for sin in yourself. That's super uncomfortable to do as a Christian, I think, to look in, look at yourself and see all the evil and sin. And it's again, the self-righteous thing, the fear thing. We don't want to put ourselves, when you think black and white, it's a super scary thing to do, especially because if you're not all good and all white, then you belong in evil. That's, there's only two options. And so there's the trap of, of thinking in that binary again. And so I think that's, so yeah, the conflict isn't between us and Satan. That's the wrong framing of what the conflict true conflict of Christian media should portray. The real conflict is human nature versus growth. And if you want to make it explicitly Christian, it's growth towards good, growth towards God, growth towards morality and truth and all of those things. But it's human nature versus growth. It's not about us versus Satan. And there's a lot of verses in the Bible about Satan influencing us, about resisting Satan. I don't know if there's that many verses about us fighting Satan because we don't it's not that way but um i found some good verses on this as well that was really cool to read because again it just lays it out entirely um for i know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh for i have the desire to do what is right but not the ability to carry it out if that's not the hero's journey what is like i have a desire i don't know how to do it and my weakness is keeping me from doing it, right? Um, for the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other. Conflict, eternal conflict, always happening. They are opposed to each other. They always will be. To keep you from doing the things you want to do. To keep you from your desires. And that's, again, the hero's journey. We have a desire, but our weakness is not allowing us to get to our desire and so the answer is we must overcome our weakness through understanding the conflict and the different models of how to live so that we may actually achieve what we desire uh, or the desires of the spirit might be a way to to say that as well for you were called to freedom brothers only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh but through love serve one another for the whole law is fulfilled in one word you shall love your neighbor as yourself it's not about satan not about overcoming satan not about being saved i mean that's very important that's core to our beliefs as of course but the conflict that we have is not against satan it's against human nature our flesh ourselves our propensity to sin and so the framing for the model that we have for Christian media is wrong. So the, the villain isn't supposed to be a manifestation of evil or the devil. He's a manifestation of the human nature, the desires of our flesh, our propensity to sin. If you were going to tackle a story is about, if you were going to tackle a story that's about someone getting saved, then the antagonist is someone who presents the most compelling arguments for why surrendering your life to Jesus would lead to destruction. That's what the antagonist would actually stand for. That's a very different frame than what we have um, in the Christian film world. I wanna see what y'all saying. The weak villain also reveals that you personally lack the strength or wisdom to overcome the conflict they would present, right? So for the writer, it may be a personal fear as well, yeah. I feel like also Christian films can take on too much in their lessons. They don't focus on a single point. They try to throw the whole Bible at you. This is very helpful for me. Oh good, 
Melanie. I always want to say Melanie, and I, I don't think that's <laughs> Melanie. <laughs> you have to tell me which one it is. Um, this is very helpful for you as you figure out your Christian fantasy work in progress. So hard to balance truth, morals, with entertainment, and a gripping story. I, I don't think they're actually divorced. I think we're just trying to jam in the wrong conflict and somehow connect it and make it compelling and reconfigure and reconfigure, but it's it's just out of order. We are not the heroes in the salvation story. And so it's not about how can we be saved. It's about what is keeping us from seeing our sin. And I'm sure there are stories that tackle that. Um, but not a lot of them. Oh, thanks, Lily. Oh, I'm glad you're on here. Hi. Um... Yeah. The a story about someone getting saved, the antagonist would be someone who presents the most compelling arguments for why surrendering your life to Jesus would lead to destruction. That is also a very uncomfortable idea for Christians. To, to imagine delving into that for months, um, building characters and building your whole conflict around that. There's a lot of fear in that. Um, <clears throat> but when you frame it differently, can you imagine a character like the Joker, who instead of being anti-justice was anti-belief? Wouldn't that be fascinating? Wouldn't that be an interesting story to tell? And I think that's, you know, instead of just another film about an anti-religious person whose life gets messed up and then they meet a super nice Christian uh, who helps them and leads them to the Lord. It's like the same story. We have already seen it. It's not done particularly well and it always portrays Christians as perfect because they're supposed to be modeling Jesus. But modeling perfection is what Jesus did, but it's not what we're supposed to do. There's some more thoughts in there that I haven't completely thought out all the way, but But this, I, this understanding of the conflict, I think, is how you bring the Christian message into other stories and other genres. Understand what the, the conflict is actually about in narrative, in, in the value that we are offering to our audiences. What is the conflict that offers value? And it's not one that they have no agency in. It's the one that they actually are struggling with. And so your whole story becomes a picture of our spiritual conflict with our human fleshly nature, right? That's what it's about. And you can frame that in so many different ways. You can make it physical. You can make it internal, psychological, moral. You can make it about crime. You can make it about fear. You can make it about lying. You can make it about romance. Like it's, it's so much more moldable because we actually have agency in it. And so I think that's probably kind of the end of my thoughts on the Christian, <laughs> the Christian film friend. The emphasis on evangelism and salvation is uh, it's not the true conflict of being a human and so that people who haven't experienced it can't connect with it but that's the whole point of evangelism that you're trying to show people the experience of salvation but they can't relate to it because it's mysterious and it's like maybe in art you could find a way to convey it, but if you, if you haven't experienced it, then how can you relate it and how can you see it in the art? And so it's kind of a, a, a useless endeavor in trying to portray something to people who haven't experienced it. And I'm, it has done good. It has brought people to Jesus, but it's not illuminating the actual conflict of our lives. <laughs> Wait, I'm... <laughs> So it's Melanie, <laughs> Melanie. Oh, glad, I'm glad Lily that you can tune in here and there. This whole point is what my main theme is about in your book. Oh, cool. It's very helpful to hear this. I think that non-Christian films have historically done the best job of showing the process of overcoming your flesh, right? Which shows what a universal truth that is, right? It is the hero's journey. That's what it is. And it's about growth. It, it's in, it's in this book. Let me see if I can find that quote. 
because I think you would be interested to hear this, Lily. Um... Oh yes, all stories are a form of communication that expresses the dramatic code. And the dramatic, dramatic code embedded deep in the human psyche is an artistic description of how a person can grow or evolve. This code is also a process going on underneath every story, and the storyteller hides this process beneath particular characters and actions, but the code of growth is what the audience ultimately takes away from a good story. Right there. Isn't that cool, Lily? I mean, I don't think he's a Christian, and I don't think there are some ideas in here that I'm like, mm, okay, um, but he, it makes so much sense from a Christian perspective what he has to say. Yeah, it makes the Christian films feel especially weird when they skip the code to growth. And they're just like, they, they have so many like deus ex machina and come to Jesus moments where it's like, boom, you are better now. Boom, you are all good now. And it's like, okay, okay, but how do I grow? How do I change? Because that's actually the conflict. How do I change is actually the con change for the good. And that's what growth is. Change for the good so that I can see my sin, so that I can overcome my sin, so that I may accept Jesus into my heart. How can I change and grow? That's actually the dramatic question, not how do we get saved? Paul does talk about bringing his flesh into subjection. So yes, that would be the most biblical form of conflict. Ooh, the dramatic code, I like it. <laughs> I thought you would like that. <laughs> so. Anywho. That is my rant on Christian film. And I'm I am um, going to switch over again because I did have one more slide and I wanted to show you because I, I had fun with my slides. Um, but the conflict is between human nature and God and goodness and growth, which is God. Um, so understanding that and reframing that for yourself might help get out of the same old, same old that we are trapped in with the model of the Christian film industry. I'm struggling to even put the gospel in my story. Because the point is that all people have the propensity to be evil, not that Jesus saves. Yeah. And what I'm saying is the, the need to put the gospel, which, okay, I have a whole impending rant on this. I have to do a lot more research on it. Um, if you look at the 1828 dictionary definition of gospel, it does not mean what it means today. It means the total summation of Jesus's life story and all of his teachings. And so the gospel nowadays has been boiled down to simply the story of salvation. And so when we think that, oh, the gospel is our mission, we actually have a very limited understanding. The general culture, I don't think there's lots of individual people who don't have a limited understanding, but general culture has a limited understanding of what the gospel actually is. Um, and so I don't know that you need to feel bad about not putting the gospel in your story because I don't think narratively it's the story we're supposed to tell I think storytellers are supposed to tell the story of growth I think testimony tells the story of salvation and and, and the personal testimony of your life um, the personal testimony of the, the gospels which were personal t testimonies of Jesus's life like that's the purpose of those but narrative is the purpose actually to tell the story of salvation I am not sure and some stories can tackle it but I think overall the purpose is to show the code to growth which is toward God and so it covers so much more than just being saved it covers virtue and character and a lot of other things all of Jesus's teachings principles 